Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Goodykant, Superintendent of Schools. Needham remains the only community in Massachusetts in which children do not have access to at least a partial full-day kindergarten program. But beginning next year, next September, uh, with the leadership of the school committee and the support of the community, we will finally implement full-day kindergarten in Needham. And joining me today to talk about kindergarten and our children are Terry Duggan, our Assistant Superintendent for Student Learning, Jessica Peterson, a principal at Newman, and one of our uh, veteran kindergarten teachers of eight years, uh, Carrie Vonnegut, who's also at Newman. Thank you all for, for joining me today. Uh, it is perfectly exciting to finally be talking about full-day kindergarten in Needham. Um, and, you know, Terry, maybe we can begin right there. How, how do we get here? What's the context for we're having full-day kindergarten? Why now? How'd that come about? Well, um, just to, to get us started, um, right now, just to, to refresh everybody's memory, um, we have a half-day program. Um, it is uh, supplemented by a half-day program for our, with uh, the CASE program. And the CASE program has done a wonderful job over the years to... Um, provide opportunities for children beyond the half-day experience and to provide them with some creative opportunities to learn and grow. However, we're only providing our students with two and a half hours a day in the classroom and right now two and a half hours a day is not really enough to be able to uh, get our kids to the experiences that we want to be able to have for them. Needham started out in 2000 as far as when I re uh, came to Needham in 2006 um, there was a study in place in 2002 that looked at kindergarten, looked at space, and concluded that 81% of our parents wanted kindergarten to be a full-day experience for their children. However, at that time, space and money were, were problematic. Um, fast forward to 2016, we conducted another study in the, in the district, and again, parents were very much in favor of um, a full-day experience, 95% of them, in fact. And... Um, Space and um, finances were also still um, issues that needed to be addressed. So we took a big leap forward. In June, the school committee voted, June 2016, the school committee voted to um, uh, institute a full-day kindergarten program that was community, uh, that was mandatory for all students and funded by the district in its resources. And so we were committed to moving the program ahead and finding solutions to the space issues and finding solutions to the funding issues and finding solutions to the program issues. So um, 2016 was our launch point. And, it, and it, it was a launch point. And since that time, you and Jessica, our kindergarten teachers, our case teachers, principals, elementary principals, have really, really been involved in thinking through not just the logistics, but also the vision for full-day kindergarten. We'll get to that in, in just a moment mm -hmm. because you have really, uh, working with the teachers, come up with a vision, and we've actually identified a program that we'll be able to implement. And I do want to get back to the, the funding and space because those two issues are important and have kind of brought us forward. Um, so I appreciate the context. Jess and, and Carrie, setting aside the logistics and, and the context, why is full-day kindergarten important? No, I think um, particularly for our youngest learners, having that full day experience is really important. So while our teachers do a fabulous job in a half day of providing some foundation, um, you know, it, really optimally you want kids to be able to apply that um, throughout their day, um, have the time and space to grow and learn, um, and, and having a full day program allows them to apply some of those pieces um, in the play that they do and how they apply what they've learned um, from that academic piece. So a full day is really beneficial for a lot of kids, um, I think for all kids actually. Um, and it really, I, I honestly think it's, it's a matter of equity too in, in thinking about access for some kids who might not have access to um, a full day program. This is gonna allow for those kids to have the same experience um, the same meaningful experience to start off their school career. And, and really provide, at least as I've heard in the conversations, a boost to their learning Absolutely. as they, as they uh, you know, move forward toward uh, first grade. Carrie, what, what do you see the benefits of full-day kindergarten? I mean, you know, we could continue with the half-day program and our students seem to be doing well. well. How is this going to be beneficial? The first thing that comes to mind is definitely the gift of time. Again, in a two and a half hour day, 
um, with specials and snacks and the logistics of coming to school and getting ready, that leaves very little time um, for us to really see what the children's potential is and how far that we can take their learning experiences. I, I challenge, by the way, as I watch you and, and your colleagues, particularly in the wintertime, I challenge anybody um, who can organize a group of 20 or 21 year old kindergartners to go out in the wintertime for recess <laughs> and, and do it in an orderly, uh, safe, and efficient manner so that you don't spend all of your time putting on the galoshes and the coats, um, but uh, you still have time for, for learning. So you, the gift of time is certainly something that uh, will be helpful there. The other thing, Kara, I've been thinking is that you right now have approximately 40 sets of parents that Correct. you that you interact with and that you work with. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. Um, not only is the gift of time, but next year with full day kindergarten, there'll be 20 or 21 sets of parents. What does that mean to you as a teacher? It's really getting to know a little bit more about each child, um, especially when it comes time for conference time. I feel like you're able to have a more meaningful conversation, a deeper conversation with parents about their child. And just getting to know the learning styles of each child a little bit more, especially with more time. To know well, each other better. And, and I would imagine that as you're working with a, a kindergartner, and here it is, say, October or, or even March, and, and you know that that child needs just a little bit more time, but oh, it, it's time to end the day so that child can get on the bus and move on perhaps to case. It, 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 it is breaking up that day. It's breaking up that continuity and, and that momentum for that child, uh, and then you have to focus on the, the next group of kids coming in. So uh, that, will all, that will all go away, and there'll be this focus, and I appreciate how you say this gift of time with each one of those children. Um, so Terry, one of the things that you and Jess worked on was developing with all of these teachers and uh, from case and kindergarten a vision for full day kindergarten. So perhaps you can you know, chat about what is that general vision? What do we want for our kids? And then Jess, can you lean in on what kind of a program did we identify that meets that vision? So what's the vision for Full Day K and Needham? Well, we started this whole process about programming, really trying to get philosophically aligned as to what we believed about kindergarten, what we believed the day should look like, um, what kinds of experiences we wanted to have for children. And so together with the kindergarten teachers and um, a consultant that we hired who was an early childhood um, professor um, at uh, Fitchburg State, as well as a practitioner. Kim Davenport, Kim right? Kim Davenport. Yep. Um, we worked on it for about a year. We spent time doing some research, thinking about what it is we wanted, having a lot of conversations about what we believed in, and came to co a consensus, because our, our goal was a consensus and a vision that we could use as a grounding or an anchor point for decisions that we would make about kindergarten going forward. So we settled, we came down to um, six core principles. And the six core principles were um, in, in, encompassing the whole child. Learning encompasses the whole child. We believe in educating the whole child. That kindergarten children learn and construct meaning through the activities that they engage in during the day. They acquire their knowledge and skills through those activities. They construct their own meaning from those act activities. Relationships and play are key. This is a big one. Play and relationships for kindergartners are the way they learn, and we value that. Um, we came to the decision that that is a, a very important value for us. Um, families. Families are our partners in this work, and that um, we know their children best through the, through the families, and they, in fact, can help us in a partnership um, actually um, do the, the kind, help us with the learning kinds of activities and extend them into the home. Diversity is important. Diversity brings a wealth of resources and a, right, and a wealth of perspectives and enriches the experience for all our students. And uh, finally, um, learning, ongoing learning, continual learning both for the students but also for the teachers and for the administrators so that this process is not a stagnant one. It grows and continues to morph as we learn more and experience more um, throughout the process. Um, and as um, I think our viewers will be able to see a graphic of um, the, 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 uh, the vision, vision. Uh, which will be great, so they can identify those words with, with what you're, you're uh, speaking about as well. Um, so you spent some time really unpacking and thinking deeply about what do we want in Needham for a full day K program. Um, you know, I, there are some, uh, you know, who might say, well, you'll just double the day. Uh, you'll just uh, do it 
half day K twice a day, and, and there you are. But that's not what you did. You really were very thoughtful about the, the vision and our program. And, 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 and Jess, uh, the, the team settled on a, a program that, that meets that vision. Um, uh, and and we, we didn't get led too far away, but we ended up in Boston, uh, where they have a program uh, focused on K-2. Mm -hmm. So where did we go? How did we get there? And, right. and what is Focus on K-2? So I think what was really important to the team in developing the vision was finding a program that was developmentally appropriate, that, you know, encouraged kids and encompassed all of the, the pieces that Terry spoke about. And so in looking at those those critical components, we found that the Focus K-2 program actually had all of those elements embedded in a very integrated, thoughtful, developmentally appropriate way. What was, was fascinating for our team is that um, our team has had a chance to go and see um, this in action in Boston, and teachers are still going to see this, um, was how much it really mirrored what we wanted for our students. All the beautiful pieces of case and the integration and the thematic play and the projects um, that were a part of case that we just didn't get to in kindergarten are a part of this Focus K2 program. So it's a very thematic-based, hands-on um, experience for kids where kids truly take their own learning um, and their interests, and that's what drives them. Because we know that five and six-year-olds are most motivated by what they're interested in. And if we can foster that, to an experience where they can also learn some of the fundamentals, then that's going to be really meaningful learning. Um, and the K-2 program really encompassed that. It also was um, a good match alignment-wise for what we do then moving into first grade as far as some of the format and the way that we ask kids to own their, their learning. Um, we felt like it was really complementary. So I know that, uh, and I think Terry's heard this, maybe Carrie, you've heard this from some parents, some have worried that in the community that this is really going to become the new first grade, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. full day kindergarten program. We're just going to push all the academics and all the learning into kindergarten. And it... No, I think that's one of the pieces of feedback that we get most frequently from teachers and anyone who looks at the program, who experiences the program, has been how developmentally appropriate it is, meaning that play is at the heart of everything that um, is planned. The teacher really is more of a facilitator that guides children, um, but really takes their lead as to their interests, their readiness level in all aspects, social and emotional and academically. And so that's where I think it's the, the beauty in this, this program um, for our kids. It'll be, I, yeah. it, it certainly, uh, it sounds like it, it is something that takes uh, mm -hmm. the best of what you're doing right now and also taking what we've learned about in case and, and, and bringing them together. Yeah, Terry, if you can, um, before I ask Carrie about what she anticipates her classroom looking like, what are some of the different programmatic pieces? Um, and, 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 and Terry and, and, and Jess, I mean, what, 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 well, what else besides what uh, will be going on, what the teacher's doing? Are there other components to the day? Well, the components of the day, the major component of the day is, a, um, is, a centers, is the centers. And the centers is about a 90-minute block of time where students have opportunities to um, choose their area of focus. Now, all of, the, all of this is built around a th thematic unit. So all the centers for the first unit is community, so all the centers are built around what, what the I understand they're four, they're four. Yeah, they're what are the four? Yeah. Community, community plants, animals, animals uh, construction, and our earth. Our earth, yeah. Yeah. okay. So, I, I, wanna, I wanna be in kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So all of these four units kind of um, serve as anchor points for the work that happens in the classroom. And so in, in each unit, the literature is tied to that thematic, uh, to, to that theme. The activities the, are tied to the theme. The science and the math and, and um, the literacy are also tied to that, to that theme. So the idea is that students have some free choice, time to explore, but within a context and within a framework of purposeful learning. Um, it's not directed learning, it's purposeful learning through play. Um, that doesn't mean we've thrown the baby out with bathwater. Built into the schedule are also time, um, time for mathematics that's taught in small groups and in large groups. There's time for uh, phonics development and word study, and there's time for reading and writing. So that the, the day is made up of several components, um, and every component is treated towards getting the child um, along the continuum from where they are developmentally.
Correct. It's it's not starting at an artificial point and ending at an artificial point. It's taking a child from where he or she is and moving them and forward. moving forward. And I also understand, um, Jess, that the program will include some specials for children. Yeah, Those well, are... It's actually going to be, a, it's a great opportunity. Currently, our, our students have access to three specials, PE, um, media, and... Um, Music, and music. music now we'll be able to expand to six specials so they'll experience art spanish technology um and in those really it, it's it's nice to be able to see that they'll be actually exposed to all of the specials um, as a part of the program that we offer one through five our kindergarten students will get a chance to experience a little bit of each um, which really, again, speaks to the developmental nature of it. You know, these are these little human beings that are just forming their interests and their likes. And so to give them an experience in all these domains, I think, is really an awesome benefit to this program as well. Carrie, as I'm listening to this, I, there's, there's a lot of new and there's some that, that isn't so new for you. But I'm, I'm curious to know what, what excites you about what you have been involved in and what you anticipate for Full Day Kindergarten. What are, you know, what are some of the, the, the components and also may make you anxious, uh, but make you really excited about uh, the full day K. Sure. I don't think I can talk about everything I'm excited about because I don't want to <laughs> take it all the day. Uh, I think back to our time two and a half years ago when we started this work with Kim, Kim Davenport, and the main guiding question was, what does high quality kindergarten look like? And it doesn't mean high quality in terms of academics. It meant high quality in terms of what's most appropriate for the child. Um, and so I'm so excited to see this come into play because the center of all of our work is the child and what's developmentally appropriate. I had the chance last week with Terry and some others to go visit a Boston school to actually see this focus on K2 come into practice. And it was amazing. Um, it was very organic, very child-centered, with some real meaningful learning going on. And it was very exciting to see. Um, are you, your, uh, many of your colleagues have visited some of the classrooms in Boston along mm -hmm. with, uh, with Terry and Jess and, and others. Uh, I would imagine, though, that we will need some ramp-up time and some onboarding time for our mm -hmm. teachers, that they're going to need some time to adjust, to learn, to uh, reflect, come back and, and think. Is that, is that the case? It is, and we, the district has put together a curriculum task force where several teachers, specialists, Terry is there, are coming together to look at what do we need to provide for the teachers going forward to start off the year in September. And it's a slow rollout, as we call it. And the way it's presented to the children and the teachers, it's going to be very organic, very natural, um, many of the same components that we've been, you know, school readiness that we've already been working on. I was thinking over the weekend, uh, I attended a brief meeting with Citizens for Needham Schools about yeah. kindergarten, and there were about 15 parents or the 12 right. parents there, so Aaron Pressman and I did that. And a couple of the parents said, so how will we learn about full-day kindergarten? Um, you know, right now, uh, the contact is, is somewhat abridged because it's a half day and, and of all the responsibilities and parents you, you have to deal with. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I envision some kind of a kindergarten academy for the parents, but we're certainly going to be engaging parents in this process. Yeah. So Jess, why don't you address the upcoming? Yeah. Event. So we um, every year we have our parent orientation, so the schools will continue to do that, I think. But this year, notably, will be the difference in the in the program, and so parents. Um, in May, most schools have theirs in May, there's one in April, you can check the school websites, but each school will be presenting a little bit more about the K2 program, um, and people will get a chance to actually see it. My hope actually is that their kids will tell them a lot about the program because they'll be so excited um, coming home with, you know, this whole unit culmination. So there's a lot of culminating projects as a part of this mm -hmm. curriculum, and I think there'll be some more tangible pieces that kids will be able to communicate with families as well. And I, I would imagine that you will, you will still have the you know, kindergarten uh, parent meetings. Yeah, that's um, and uh, that will occur, those typically occur in the fall or? The how? fall and the spring. Okay. And Dan, the nice thing about, as we mentioned, there are four units um, built into this curriculum. And at the end of each of them, they hold what's called a showcase, mm -hmm. where families come in and all of the work is on display for the families, for the rest of the school. So, it's a really nice so that's an opportunity see. for parents mm -hmm. now, something they haven't really had necessarily sure. to come Great. in sure. and, and, and see their, their, their children in action. Well, I know I've seen in some of the videos, some of those children 
uh, their their self-efficacy and and you know explaining what they're doing and sharing their learning, which just seems uh, really quite powerful. All of this work, Spanish, the 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 centers, uh, students, you know, having some autonomy and choosing their own learning. There's only you know the kindergarten teacher. That's a huge burden. We though in Natum are also planning on and we're we're budgeting for a second set of hands in the classroom, a teacher assistant. So what does Jess, what, what do you envision the teacher assistant doing? What's the role of the teacher assistant in our in our full day kindergarten classroom? Sure, I think in any in early childhood, particularly the ratio of adults to children is really crucial. Um, you know, it's it's best practice to have two adults for about every twenty students, and so being that for some of our children, this is their first experience with school, so there's a lot of social emotional pieces that certainly go into the beginning of the year, that idea of school readiness, separation from families, um, what it means to be maybe kind of on my own in kindergarten. Um, I, I can see being a lot of why two adults are necessary, but what's also unique about this program, I think, is there's an opportunity because kids are more self-driven um, to different stations, the adults really are there to facilitate the learning, to ask questions, to guide students. And so I really see this second adult not only meeting some of the physical and social and emotional needs, but also being another facilitator of learning, another person to engage um, just having conversations with kindergartners, that language development is so important. Um, I see them being a true partner in doing some of that work as well. Well, I, I will tell you is I've learned about Full Day Kindergarten and the vision that you've created and a program that we may want to implement. Uh, I, I was one of those ones who had to learn about what that second set of hands would mean because there's, there's a cost to that. Okay. Uh, I, I am at a place now certainly where I've shared with the community um, with the school committee and finance committee and select board and, and soon town meeting um, that I, I could not advocate uh, for implementation of this program without that set of second hands. Um, I, I believe now that it's so crucial and so important to have to really provide that, that foundation of, of learning for, for our students. Uh, so I, I see how that can be really important. Maybe talk a little bit about how, this is a lot of logistics, a lot of people to hire. So we're essentially doubling our kindergarten teaching force from call it 11 to 22. So we have to hire 11 teachers. And then hiring teacher assistants, we need about 20, 21, um, depending on the number of sections we end up with. How, how, how are we thinking about that, Terry? Where, where is that planning at? Well, It's a lot of folks to bring on board. It's a lot of folks to bring on board, but fortunately we have a lot of very, we have a lot of folks who are interested in being on board, which, is, which helps with the process. And the Human Resource Department has been very instrumental in helping us think through processes and procedures for making this happen. There is a lot of interest among our case teachers to become part of the kindergarten staff on a permanent basis um, and a lot of interest on the part of existing teachers at other grade levels to mm -hmm. also be part of this whole kindergarten experience. Oh, so there may be some teachers so then, who are going from third grade into right. kindergarten exactly. which creates an opening in third grade not necessarily kindergarten. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But nonetheless, it's going to be a very busy hiring season. Absolutely. And uh, the principals have already started. They're well on their way to doing a first level of screening of, of uh, applicants for the process. And hopefully we'll have at least the teacher portion of this in place by, the, by late spring. And hopefully during the summer we, we will be busily engaged in hiring our teaching assistants. I would imagine, would we plan on do, doing some kind of special programming and onboarding for our teacher yes. assistants? Because yes. we have special education teacher assistants mm -hmm. in, in, in the district, but we, we typically do not have regular education right. teaching assistants. So there will need to be some, some education programming Absolutely. for them as well. Yeah, we're, we're looking towards the early part of September when school goes, gets back into session to using some of that PD time to do some work with our um, our teaching assistants. Plus we're also looking at periodic times during the course of next year with our new calendar where we can bring them together to also um, uh, uh, reflect on their experiences, ask questions, and learn and grow. So we're planning on building them into the, the professional development opportunities that we currently have in place for our classroom teachers, um, but at, in, a, in, a, in a streamlined way that makes it possible for them to, to, to become a group Become a become a kind of a, a community of the learners themselves, and so that's in the works at this moment. The other thing that we do have in the works are, are the all the new teachers we we are onboarding because we're going to be onboarding approximately ten, 
new classroom teachers. And so they're going to be joining us at the end of June for a three-day workshop. Um, and the, um, uh, the team in Boston has been really uh, supportive of us, and they will be coming out to actually replicate for us the workshop that they do for their own teachers during the summer and so that we can build capacity among our own, te our own team so that uh, being able to continue this process as we move forward. I'm, I'm worried that our, our colleagues in Boston will say no more Needham. We've had enough <laughs> of uh, Needham because we've really, uh, we've, we've really been taking a lot of their time, but I think it's, it's, it's benefited it, us uh, they, hugely. You, the, one of the, another logistic piece that I know that I'm engaged in, and, and Terry, you and I have been, and, and Jess, um, uh, Kara, we've tried to keep it away from you a little bit, is the whole financing of this and, and, and the space uh, and all that. And just really briefly, as, as, we're, as we're running on time here, but um, the, the, there is a cost to implementing full-day kindergarten. And uh, the school committee, uh, and I think it's important for me to state right now, as you mentioned at the very beginning, in 2002, it was the Needham School Committee that said we need to get this going. And again in 2016, the Needham School Committee said we need to get this going. They gave us the charge to get this going. They, the school committee, had provided the leadership and the advocacy to get us to this point for a full day compulsory in kindergarten in Needham. Uh, without their leadership, this would not be happening. We wouldn't be having this kind of a conversation. And one of the things the school committee has advocated for is approximately $2 million in additional resources in our budget to provide for the staffing teachers and teacher assistants, the resources, material, right. curriculum, um, and some space needs that we have. The opening of the Sunita L. Williams School really provides some of the elbow room we need for full-day kindergarten. We're able to shift some spe special education programs in the district, um, and Sunita Williams will be home to uh, one of our programs. Uh, the addition of a couple of modular classrooms at Mitchell will really help that school meet its space needs. And so we're at a point where uh, while it's imperfect and it will be tight at all of our schools, we finally will have the space for full-day kindergarten. And because of the advocacy of the school committee and the support of the select board and the finance committee, uh, we anticipate that town meeting will do the same thing in May and, and provide for uh, the resources we need. So that, that's, been, that's been pretty amazing and, and uh, uh, helpful for this community. Um, as we conclude here, I, you know, I'm, I'm reminded of Case. Uh, CASE, the Kindergarten After School Enrichment Program, really has provided an option for Needham families for so many years. Um, and, and we will say goodbye to CASE at the end of this year. Uh, it's a little, little sad to say goodbye to the program. They've been great partners with mm, us. Absolutely. Fabulous. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And I, I, um, I'm, I'm glad that there's some folks who are interested, that we've learned uh, from them in, in this whole process. And yet, you know, it reminds me too that that uh, approximately 60 to 70 percent of our families avail themselves of five full days of case after they leave a half day of kindergarten. Um, the remaining parents, 30 to 40 percent, either have the children go home, they go to another program in the community. Um, some would like to go to a program but can't afford to do so. And so, as you said, Jess, this program is, is uh, you know, kind of leveling the playing field for all kindergarten families and, and um, uh, that makes it uh, pretty exciting. Um, Terry, just real briefly as, uh, as we conclude, how does this work with Full Day Kindergarten tie into our portrait of a Needham graduate work? Is it aligned with that vision? It is very much aligned with that vision. In fact, it, I think I look at this program as being the foundation of creating the experiences for students as they move through the system. Um, creativity, collaboration, communication, the ability to think critically, listen, design a solution, test a solution, um, advocate, be persistent, adapt to change are all part of the program. Uh, it's built into the practices of the program. So it doesn't become something that's taught independent of the program. It becomes part and parcel of what the program is. So that routines in the classroom, instructional practices, questions and questioning techniques that the teachers use in the classroom are all geared towards fostering and developing these, these skills as part of the experience that we're providing for students. So our hope is that as students go through the system, we just keep reinforcing much of this as they go along, and that um, they will, it, it will become part of the natural fabric of what we do across the district. It, it reminds me, too, that as we go through full-day kindergarten, our first grade teachers are going to need to be involved in learning about their incoming students, because things may, may look different for them. Sure. 
And uh, that actually is kind of exciting. So there's going to be a lot of learning going on, not just for the kindergartners and their parents and our kindergarten teachers, but our principals and, and our first grade and our second grade teachers. Well, I, I, a couple things as, as we conclude here. Uh, it's, it's really it's a great conversation. It's nice to know that next year there will be no communities in Massachusetts <laughs> where children do not have at least some access to full-day kindergarten because Needham will have, have solved that problem. I do want to give a shout out to the CASE program, in particular Connie Leonard, who's been our director for, for 25 years um, and, and really led that, that, that program forward. As I think about full-day kindergarten, some of the things that you're suggesting uh, today is that it's going to provide a foundation of learning and equity for all of Needham's children, and that's really important, that equitable level playing field. Uh, mm -hmm. It will be a student-centered uh, program. There'll be a lot of student autonomy. They'll be led by caring adults who really will be thinking about each individual child and, and have more time, the gift of time, to work with that child and, and child's family. And our teachers are going to need some time. Um, and we're going to provide that time for training, for collaboration, for growth and learning as, as we go through this, uh, this really this kind of bold new adventure for, for the Needham Public Schools that, as, as Terry suggests, is, is aligned with our work around Portrait of a Needham Graduate and perhaps can be a model for what happens in subsequent grades. Okay. Well, it's exciting to think about, and uh, I look forward to visiting that first full-day kindergarten class. It'll be yours, Carrie, next fall, all right? I look thanks forward for, to it. <laughs> thanks very much for this conversation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.